Cheers, friends. Friends, before the weekly vlog even starts, let us have a conversation about Bloom, who is sponsoring today's video. So thank you so much to them for doing so, because you guys know that I have been on a kick lately to figure out a new routine going into this new year and really implement habits that are good for my body, that nourish my body. And greens are a really great way to make sure that your gut is staying healthy. It helps reduce bloating, improve energy. And these particular greens are filled with over 30 ingredients that include prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes and a mix of fruits and veggies that are super good for you that are really gonna help you keep everything balanced and one of my favorite things truly and also the most surprising when I first tried bloom is that typically greens to me don't taste well at all but these ones are the best ones I have tried to date I've fallen in love with the strawberry kiwi flavor because I'm partial to anything strawberry kiwi first of all but it's so delicious it goes down super smooth and if strawberry kiwi is not your flavor they've got others like mango berry coconut citrus and their original flavor so you've got a bunch of things to choose from so i'm gonna leave bloom linked down below in case you guys want to check out their greens too everything else they have to offer tastes good makes it feel good just found out the Emmys are today. My brother and I watch it every year. And not only is he coming over, but I feel like making a broccoli cheese soup. So let's go grocery shopping. <laughs> my friends and welcome to a new weekly vlog i just got back from grocery shopping and it was a very quick round because i have been craving broccoli cheese soup for about four days now and my brother and i found out that today out of nowhere on a monday they're hosting the emmys and he's coming over and i thought what better opportunity to make a broccoli cheese soup than when my brother's coming over and we can have a nice party meal while we watch the show and my brother and I's favorite bonding activity is watching movies and TV shows. So every year, award season, we're watching it together. Doesn't matter which one it is. And so we didn't realize that the Emmys were on a Monday. It's like so random. I think it's because the Critics' Choice Awards were yesterday. I don't know if anybody cares about that, but hey, we watch award shows. So <laughs> the groceries have been bought in order to make the broccoli cheese soup happen. So first order of business of the day, aside from working out, which already happened earlier today, is done. Ugh, this is heavy. I need to put all of that away. And what do you know? Because I'm me, I totally forgot to get my medication while I was grocery shopping. I told myself the first stop when I entered the grocery store would be the pharmacy and I did not head in there. So I just placed an order for my meds so that they could be brought over. And then I also ordered a chai latte because as all good things go, today is Monday. I need something warm for the heart, for the soul. The cats also just woke up from their nap. So if you see shadows fluctuating, if you hear noises in the background they totally just woke up to be menaces and i absolutely love that for them who am i to stop them from being menaces when i am one myself the plan for today is that there are no plans i typically take mondays off because sundays are work days for me i sprint on patreon every sunday as well as prep things for the coming week so yesterday i sprinted for nine and a half hours which was pretty crazy of me and i pre-filmed for this coming week so yesterday was a very exhausting day so today I am feeling the ramifications of that. So we're going to take it slow. I still have some desk work to do. So I am going to be in tune with my emails. I'm waiting on approval from a sponsor. So my media manager may or may not be getting back to me on that one. So I'll be staying tuned to that. I have to reply to YouTube comments and then also double check some things on Discord and then put up a Patreon post. So I'm going to get those things handled as soon as my chai latte is here because I refuse to work without that in my hands. So that is just 
just the vibe for the day. I am not currently actively reading anything. I finished my last book of last week yesterday, but Vera Wong just stole my heart. So I had to finish that book yesterday. So we are going to pick out a new book today. I don't know what exactly that's going to be. I am looking at Lord of the Rings because picking out an audiobook sounds very appealing right now, but I also kind of want to finish the bone season. So we'll see. We'll see when I pick something out. Let me not make any promises nor any announcements because as a mood reader, things are constantly shifting. So I, at this point in time, know not what I'm going to be reading. But that is that in the meantime, don't have anything else to bring up. I think it's hard to bring something up when I literally finished weekly vlogging yesterday and now a new vlog is kickstarting. I'm like, what does one say? Uh, I mean, I guess what I will say is, are we liking the weekly vlogs? <laughs> <laughs> Do we like the vibes? Because I'm trying to be more consistent with it this year and potentially bring this as a staple for the channel, maybe, perhaps. So we'll see how it goes. I think I'm mostly terrified of weekly vlogging because I am terrified of not being consistent and not picking up the camera and giving up halfway through, which has been the case many a time in the past. Don't have really anything else to say of substance, not that any of this has been of substance, but welcome to a new vlog. Who am I to say? Welcome. dinner. My brother's here. Quiero decir hola. Hi. He's saying hi. The cats are also eating and I need to get started on the broccoli cheese soup because that's going to be ready in about an hour and go from there. I also got my med 10 out of 10 good service replied to YouTube comment and that's about the extent of what we've done today aside from growing grocery shopping. So it's been a productive rest day because <laughs> nothing else has happened. So let us get started with the cooking. The Emmys just started too and I'll see you when I see you. Today's chronicle of Mel has lost another nail. We are three for three. I am counting down the hours to get my nails done. I literally reached out to my nail tech and I was like, hey, do you think you could do it tomorrow? And she was like, yeah, no, I can't do tomorrow. So the earliest she can do as opposed to Thursday is now Wednesday. I am technically busy on Wednesday because I have got sprints. So I'm going to have to figure something out maybe to rearrange a few things to make this situation work out because this is is horrid. These are all my real nails, by the way. I do poly gel, so anytime a nail snaps off, it's really, really painful. I was literally doing dishes and the nail just bent and snapped out a thingy. The Emmys were were they just were the last of us got robbed of every award nothing was won by pedro or by bella so succession took it all i think unsurprisingly it's a good show but but every single one like golden globes critics choice and then the emmys i don't know if anybody cares i do i'm salty i'm gonna be salty forever so there's that i drank my meds and now we are heading into bed well I'm gonna get changed all the things do the nighttime routine very short one by the way watch me just put on my pajamas and then hop into bed after brushing my teeth. I am going to pick up the bone season because I started this when? September, October, November. Whenever it got here to my hands and I grabbed it for the first time whenever I unboxed it, I started it not too long after and I am still making progress with it. So I am currently, by the way, I've already read the bone season, but I have not read the revised edition. I read the original edition and I quite enjoyed it, but I am currently if I could ever find my bookmark, that would be lovely. Hello, where is it? I'm exactly 100 pages in. <laughs> so I've decided that I'm going to finish this this week, which is one of my books in progress. Ignore that ugly finger. That's gonna bother me every clip of this vlog up until the nails are fixed. So it's your curse as much as it is mine. If I have to see it, so do you. Merry Christmas, a Bon Apple Diddy. <laughs> a 
new day, my friends, and I just finished editing, putting up a few things on Patreon, and the bulk of the work of the day is virtually done. It took me all morning to get tomorrow's video edited, which is my most anticipated releases video for 2024. I talked about 20 books, but tell me why. I had 29 clips. Each clip was about five minutes long, and it was virtually a nightmare to edit. I had fun editing it, honestly, and putting in like the effects and the pictures and everything, but it took longer than it should have. So the entire morning was burned away with that, but at the very least, early access is up on Patreon, which is the thing I'm most concerned about, and the video is scheduled and all ready to go for tomorrow, which is amazing. The sponsor for that video also approved it, so all the important things are done. Desk work for the day, done. And now we get to chill back and relax for basically the rest of the day, which is nice. Last night, I sat down with the bone season, and I didn't really get a whole lot read because I got really sleepy as soon as my head hit the pillow. And so I read all of 10 pages, literally page 110 is where I got to. And that was the progress. So not a whole lot of it, but I am going to sit down today and read hopefully a lot with my little ambiance ASMR room. And then I got my hold in for Heartstopper Volume 5. I completely forgot that I did. And I was like, oh, what am I going to start out the week with? So I think that the very first like proper thing I'll read and finish this week is going to be Heartstopper Volume 5 then the bone season and then we'll make choices from there but I do think that sounds like the most concrete plan I have thought of as of yet so I think we are looking good on the reading front today I also need to cook lunch I feel like the only thing I've really featured in this vlog is food so far and I'm like listen a girl has got to keep herself well fed but I need to prep lunch as well so that I can get that going I love that I say prep lunch it's literally 3 45 p.m by the way just for context so I need to make food too so all of that will ensue in the next few hours and very glad to report that nail gate will be fixed tomorrow. <laughs> Good Vin. She's just sleeping on the chair. She's so well, she's grooming now, but she was sleeping there. She's so cute. Love you guys the most. <laughs> we will now go make lunch and we'll go read and I will switch from Heartstopper to the Bone Season or from the Bone Season to Heartstopper and then back to the Bone Season. Stay tuned and find out. Since I know you love my beautiful angles, welcome. I love that I've been vlogging for a full 24 hours now and I have not had a single thing of substance to say. Hi Meg, I'm watching your video. Thank you for your service of entertainment. And look at her. She's trying to attack it, Vin. I swear to God. This cat is something else. Look at her. <laughs> I'm having a crisis because why did seeing this Heartstopper will conclude in volume six make me extra emotional when in my head I've already been processing the fact for like the past two years that volume five was supposed to be the last one and now that it's not and now I get the hope and dream of another one I'm like so now I have to wait for another one for it all to be over anytime I look at the camera it's like a different jump scare with these damned hands I'm gonna talk like this the entire time up until I get my nails fixed tomorrow I swear to god but basically, if you're not familiar with what Heartstopper is at its core and to kind of simplify the plot of it, I guess, it's a queer love story between two teenagers who meet in high school and who become really good friends. They enter a rugby team together and then slowly but surely that develops into a romance. And one of the main characters, Charlie, is gay and out. He has been very much bullied because of that. And then Nick, in that very first volume of Heartstopper we see, is not quite sure about his sexuality yet. He hasn't even considered that he is anything other than straight and his experience with Charlie makes him kind of question and re-question everything he knows about relationships and love and his sexuality and what that all really means to him both in that relationship and separate. I think it also challenges Charlie in many different ways to sort of confront a lot of the things that he's liked to ignore like the fact that he has had very immense and long 
already was battles with mental health and mental illness and also chronic illnesses. He's got an eating disorder. He has suffered through depression and anxiety and self-harm. And there are just many layers to Charlie and his character just based on his experience alone with his family and also at school. And I really love the way that these volumes have developed these characters. And I think specifically in volume five, seeing Nick now going and venturing out into looking for unis and where is he going to study? And is he willing to do long distance with Charlie or not? How will that complicate or simplify things for the both of them? What does he want to study? What does he want to do with his life? All questions that he is very unsure of. And then on the flip side, Charlie healing his eating disorder and going to therapy very consistently. And he is relying not only on his medical professional side, but also on his family and his friends and his boyfriend. I think this volume displays very clearly how because of everything that these two people have lived together just in a year, just, you know, in a simple year, how codependent they are and how oftentimes that leads them to make or stop themselves from making very specific decisions because they are afraid of what the other person may think, how the other person may feel. And it's very sweet in that they're taking into consideration each other in every situation. But it, I think because of the point where they're at in their lives, where Nick is off to college, Charlie still has an extra year of school. It's that topic of you can't make decisions based on this other person. You have to choose the right things for you, the best things for you. And so I I love the way that all of the characters deal with that in their own right in this. And I do love that the volume addresses the fact that there are many ways to be intimate with your partner. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical. It means different things for different people. And we also see that from Tori's side of things, which I know Tori has her own book, but we see the acknowledgement of her sexuality and even her own internal battle, her own relationship. And so I think this volume was just so very beautiful. I know I said this about volume four when it came out that I said it was my favorite so far, but I really do think that about volume five. I think it was very great in terms of character development and I can't wait to see where we end up in volume six. I'm gonna be very sad when it comes out. I think it's later to come out this year. I don't know if that's true or not because I don't know how that's working in tandem for the next season of the TV show. Have they confirmed a new season? I'm not sure. I'm so sad that it's nearly over. So exciting stuff, a little bit intimidating that we're almost done with Heartstopper. And I can't believe Heartstopper has been part of my life for the past like three years. I love this, five stars to a Heartstopper volume five. All that to say, hi baby, look at the baby. I'm about to head into the kitchen again. <laughs> I feel like I live in the kitchen these days to uh, do the dishes so that these don't accumulate too much, especially as I head into the night time and we'll have dinner in a, in a while and also give the cats food. But I also just need us all to appreciate the thing that has happened very accidentally. I don't know how. I've read seven books this year and every single book I've read this year is blue. Like, I don't know how that has happened, but literally look at Goodreads. Every single damn book is blue. Thought this is the most random coincidence ever. Listen, it seems like I'm gravitating towards blue books this year. I don't know what the deal with that is, but just thought it was a random little fact to share with the class. Anyways, let me go unload the dishwasher first because we have got about a thousand dishes to get out of here, literally. Look at this, it's, um, it's quite a lot. So we're going to get this out of the dishwasher and then do the small bit of dishes, which is really just pots, pans, individually one of each, and then a plate <laughs> to get done. Because we wash as we clean. We wash as we clean. We wash as we cook. I, I thought that was gonna sound cooler, but I totally messed that up. So 
surprisingly, T has become my best friend when I get anxious. I was not an avid tea drinker, but because of my temporomandibular disorder, I don't have caffeine every day so as to not tense up my jaw and therefore trigger my bruxism. So I have had to start drinking tea as a second resort when I do want something cozy and something warm. And my anxiety just showed up tonight. I don't know why. It showed up about an hour ago. So I took a shower and then I had dinner and I decided to switch books. It surprisingly showed up as I was reading The Bone Season. So I don't know if it was me or the book or something, but something was not meshing quite well. So I decided to pick up something that I know is bound to be a good time. And that is Reckless by Elsie Silver. Her books just have a way to put me in a really good mood, to make my heart flutter in a good way, not in an anxiety ridden kind of way. <laughs> and so I am going to be starting this tonight. I've already taken my meds and I'm steeping some lemon ginger tea with some honey. My heart just started going pit a pat -a for no reason at all and I do have routines in place for that and that's why I immediately hopped into the shower. I talked to my mom a little bit and to my brother and my mom's partner. We just had a little game session for butter cheese so you may recognize that as India. Also we play that all the time and so played that as a little distraction. Now some tea after dinner and a cozy little bookie book and I would typically read in the living room <laughs> as opposed to my bed because anytime I lay in bed and attempt to read I always get sleepy but I do think this calls for a cozy snuggled up in bed reading session which I rarely do and that's how you know I'm not feeling my greatest because I want to do that I want to snuggle up in bed and hope that it gets better but thankfully it's nighttime and I can just go to bed and sleep it off and have a better day tomorrow let's go let's read about the bull rider turned father I think the synopsis for this book is that they have like a one night stand and she gets preggers and he doesn't know and so then he ends up finding out about the baby and it goes from there and it follows winter which is summer's sister summer is hi baby summer is the main character for the first book in the chestnut spring series so elsie silver yet again going about the single parent trope i'm curious to see what she's gonna do with like the surprise pregnancy single parent aspect in the book so let's hope that this is is a good time and again I just know if anything's gonna put me in a good mood it's going to be Elsie Silver so let us get into this and I'll keep you guys updated because this is not in my January TBR but sometimes we just have to deviate because I was gonna deviate anyway this entire start of the vlog has been a deviation okay we are not on route people because <laughs> I read Heartstopper which was not in my TBR and then I picked up The Bone Season which was also not in my TBR so at this point I'm just going to keep that theme going just with another book and then we'll go back to the TBR for now. It's hot bull riders and they're single mamas and I'm excited about it. <laughs> So you mean to tell me that Theo and Winter head into the hotel. Chapter five ends, I'm on page 75. About to enter chapter six, but I am going to bed though because I, I was starting to snooze in chapter five. And we don't get to see that night. You have got to be joking. I'm gonna lose my mind, Elsie Silver. Ah!
and I feel like a new person. Not only did I wash my hair, by the way, because we needed a little refresh. My nails are done. The nails are complete. We have got all nails on, all nails on deck. And I absolutely love it. I feel like a new person. It's a great day. I'm currently sprinting on Patreon. Hello, the sprints just started. So it is bound to be a great day. I'm about to put in some lunch, which I do. I wasn't sure what I wanted for lunchy lunch. I think we're gonna have a great kids meal, okay? We're gonna make some chicken nuggies and some fries and it's gonna be great. We're going to air fry them. It's gonna be delicious and we're gonna have a riot. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly was like, so what am I gonna make for lunch? Because I pulled out some chicken, but honestly, don't really want to cook right now, so I think we can just cook tonight. I ha have been reading Reckless, <laughs> and I am happy to report that while I was getting my nails done, I read a shit ton of it. So I am currently 174 pages in, haven't even finished the chapter I'm on, but I just need to come on and update y'all. This was the best decision I ever made. My body is happy, my brain is happy, everything about me is happy. I love this. You guys were totally right. Right. I think Theo Silva will become my favorite in the Chestnut Spring series. There's something about his charisma, his personality, his talent, his grace, everything that I absolutely love. He is just so charismatic, so flirty in all of the right ways. And there's something about the way that Winter our main character disarms him that is especially endearing and just absolutely amazing that I am loving. And I was indeed right about the setup. It does have a surprise pregnancy trope. I'm saying that primarily because if you guys don't love that, don't go into the book, you know? We don't get to see the one night stand. When I tell you guys I lost my mind yesterday because I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me, we don't get to see. I think Elsie Silver is gonna be that girl. I Elsie Silver is just, she knows, okay? She is going to make me lose my goddamn mind. It's because I just know she's going to pop in with the one night stand, but when we need it most, and it's probably going to be like in a moment where they're either making a really good connection point, so we flash back and we see the one night stand, or when they're fighting, and then we flash back and then we're going to see the one night stand. Either way, I'm very excited for when we get there. I think it's going to be an amazing time. Everything about it is working. The chemistry, the banter, just the quips that they have with each other, they're on it, okay? I love that they really match each other's energy when it comes to that like give and get you know banter and oh there's a specific word for it i'm thinking about it and i can't think about it i forgot the word but point is they are they're just such firecrackers that i absolutely love it and they keep up with each other so nicely theo mostly in a very flirty way but winter in a i don't give a bullshit sort of way and i just absolutely love them together i think they're going to be amazing i'm a little over a third of the way through and they're not even like properly together so when they do when they do i will lose my mind i just need y'all to know that so anyways there's that no coherent thoughts but some thoughts about reckless because that is where elsie silver leaves me at okay just dumbfounded for words no words at all but four minutes of words apparently so it's a great time i love this i don't think any other book will top this <laughs> that's a lie maybe they will but i think this this very well may be on its way to becoming my favorite romance book of all time a very charged sentence but i do think it may be the reality there's even a sentence when he finds out and he's like so you you mean i missed the pregnancy and the birth and er i i missed everything and she's like well not everything and he's like no i missed everything the facts that he wanted to be there for her i just know okay so mama crio un buen hijo carajo i just know his mom raised him right and we already saw a scene with his mom and i can't wait for the mom to meet winter and vim and it's gonna be so good elsie silver the woman you are i kneel it's so good anyways let's go make some lunchy lunch and also i need to do laundry <laughs> let me explain to you why so let's go to the <laughs> bathroom first and then go to my kitchen slash living room let me let me walk you through this okay hi i typically do my reset days on thursdays however let me also get this towel in here from when i showered i typically do my reset days on thursdays but tomorrow i have to edit last week's weekly vlog and if i'm gonna tell you anything about that weekly long is that it's fucking long okay i got really overexcited we're also carrying this very poorly hello 
because I don't want to drag it because the noise is awful. I hate it. But I weekly vlogs last week and I got really excited about it. I was like really like yapping it up and talking much like I am now. And because of it, I do think we're going to end up with a really long vlog and loads of footage to, uh, to go through. In fact, let me tell you, we have over 100 gigabytes of footage. Isn't that fun? And so I think tomorrow is going to pretty much be a super desk heavy kind of work day. And so because of that, and because I know I'm going to have less time than usual free, because I'm going to burn, I just know it, all my morning <laughs> in virtually my entire afternoon doing that, I know I'm not gonna have much time to do much tidying up like I typically do. And so I'm trying to get ahead of that today as much as I can. So therefore, laundry is occurring because that really is the most time consuming aspect of it all. Let's get some laundry done as responsible adults or whatever. <laughs> ugliest angle ever welcome this is just what you're blessed with i'm blessing you with all the angles and all the sides <laughs> and we're blocking this dobachina because you don't need to see that okay it's just it's what it is it's 11 30 i would typically be like <laughs> well in bed at this point but i have exactly 70 pages left of reckless and so we're staying up and we're reading this and let me tell you something <laughs> i just got to the chapter for that one night stand and i can't go to bed until i know and at that point I might as well just finish the book. So this is just where we're at. I think seeing this particular trope, which I was talking to my patrons about it earlier. I was like, I have never, I don't think, read like the surprise pregnancy trope or like the surprise, you've got a daughter, you've got a son, you got a child trope, um, unless I'm reading like Tony Stark fan fiction. And so this is, this is just me admitting to my sins. It's fine. God knows you do too. I don't think I've ever seen this trope in like a traditionally published book and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, seeing Theo get acquainted with not only Winter as a person and seeing what makes her tick, what makes her feel really insecure and really understand who she is as a person and why she never bothered to tell him that she had a daughter like in the first place because she doesn't want to burden others the way that she's been burdened. She doesn't want to be rejected the way that she's been rejected in the past. She doesn't want to feel let down like she's been let down in the past. There's just a lot of charged history when it comes to Winter never being protected, never really being taken care of, never being defended, never really been paid attention to at all. She's had to do that for other people, be one step ahead when it comes to other people's feelings, but nobody's ever taken care of her. So like, this is new to her. With Theo getting acquainted with who Winter is and then his daughter and falling even more in love with Winter through the scope of like parenthood and figuring out what this dynamic looks like for the both of them and seeing what their everyday looks like and what their, you know, what their boundaries are, what they're willing to do and not do and how they keep learning about each other and how even Theo's mom, Loretta, I love her. She's in the book and she's still, she's biting the book. I'm so sorry. And how Loretta has just been so supportive and she's a mother to Winter in a way that her mother never was. It's just such a good book and I think it feels like extra emotional and like, I don't know, it just feels amazing because Winter is the older sister. So whenever anybody sells this book, it's like, this is the book for like the older sister. I'm like, yes. Cause like all we ever yearn for is for like others to take care of us in the way that we've taken care of each other. And so seeing that so on page, so beautifully. I'm like losing my mind over this damned book. Like it's just so freaking good. Also, Seal is totally just like scratching the bed and now climbing it apparently. Hi, Seal. Do you want to show the people your skills? Oh, she's not, She something's happening today. She's not very smooth with it today. Anyways, all that to say, this book is amazing. I just, I can't believe that after this, I just have Bo's book left and that's it. Like that's it for Chestnut Springs. Red and Summer are so stale. I don't know if it's because they, I've only read about them through the scope of like other characters' books, but like they're really not 
it. Like, they just seem so stale to me. Like, no, nothing exciting. But maybe at another point, because of the nostalgia, I will. But for now, we're just... Daddy Theo will carry us through. So this was the best decision I ever made. My TBR be damned. It was a great choice. <laughs> Yes, alegría. How are we all doing today? I hope that you guys are having a beautiful day. I love that I say this as if like we're actually talking like face to face right now and we're not. However, I am getting ready to head to breakfast. My brother and I decided to go out for dim sum. So we're going out for brekkie. And then because at the mall we're going to, they've got the dim sum place. They've also got um, one of my favorite home stores, home goods stores. I really want to go see if I can find some decorative pillows to replace the ones that I had to put away for Christmas. And also I need to get a few food containers because I broke one on Monday. I opened one of the spaces where I keep my containers and I didn't realize how far out it was. So as soon as I opened it, it just fell, it broke. And so I need to not only replace that, get a few other ones because I never have enough containers to store away fruits or if I've opened a specific veggie or if I need to store away, you know, rice and meats and whatnot, I never have enough containers as it is. So I need to make sure to get those two. And I've just got like an ongoing list of things that I want to slowly but surely get for the apartment that I realized during the December time that I I wanted to get for decorative purposes. And so want to see how much of that I'm able to get today. So it's a little two for one. I finished Reckless last night. Please hold as I etch my Percy purse because we need to be ready quickly. But I did finish Reckless last night and it was amazing. I just cannot fathom the idea of living life without an Elsie Silver book ready to read. And so I think I'm gonna hold off on Hopeless because I don't want the Chestnut Spring series to be done. And I have mentioned this before, but I really don't wanna read Flawless. Summer and Rhett to me are just so stale. And so I don't know that I wanna read about them all too much, keeping it completely real, honest, and 100. So I don't know that I will. However, I absolutely loved Theo Silva as the love interest. He is definitely my favorite. I thought Cade was gonna be my favorite because hello, single parent trope. But I guess this in its own way is also the single parent trope, but just make it different. And so I really loved him in the way that he owned up to everything, the way he stepped up to the plate with no hesitation, the way that he just continuously showed up for Winter, even in the times where she claimed she didn't want him showing up for her. He knew that she needed him and he never hesitated to be incredibly assertive and to be there for her, especially because he missed out on those very important milestones from like the birth and the pregnancy and the first nine months. And so he wants to make sure that he doesn't miss another moment. But I do love that the book does establish, I guess, those feelings of inadequacy and insecurity that not only come with parenthood, because like nobody knows what they're doing up until you build that practice, but also the feeling of insecurity when it comes to stepping up to a role that you didn't even know you'd have to step into. And because Winter and Vivi have already figured out a routine for themselves. Where does Theo fit into that? Does he even fit into that? And I love that the whole situation in the book didn't come without its doubts or insecurities or hurdles to walk past. It wasn't just a simple stroll in the park. It wasn't that easy, I think mostly internally. And we also see that struggle with Winter on the flip side with her trying to fit into the Eaton family and feeling like her sister now has a place where she fits in with people that love her, with people that are super cheerful. And Winter has always been branded as the ice queen, as the sister that is standoffish, that is rude, that brush everyone off and that has this really strong facade on of not caring and not wanting to be involved and Winter being very insecure now that he's seeing her sister in that setting who she wants to get along with and not knowing where she fits into that dynamic. Where does she fit into this family that she has not really ever interacted with that much? And so I love that both of our main characters have got that struggle just in very different ways. It was honestly a really beautiful 
beautiful display of growth and just seeing Winter get somebody who gets her, somebody who is willing to look past that standoffish persona, that bantery persona, that oftentimes sarcastic humor, but also the type of person who will always claim they never need help when help is exactly what they need and seeing her get that help and seeing her get that support and just continuously throughout the book building this really amazing support group, this inner circle that's going to be there for her and all of those really great moments and the really tough moments. I love it and I love how that even manifests in like small bouts of even just smiling and laughing which are things that are very strange to her just because of the way that she grew up and the way that her mom raised her and so I love that Winter got to experience love for the first and second and third time in this book. It was just phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Elsie Silver does it again. She's just amazing. I freaking love Elsie Silver and it's so funny too because I did not think I would end up reading Elsie's books because everybody was talking about like, oh my god, flawless and oh my god, the cowboys and the wool riders and all these different things. And I was like, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to read that. Let's see, I because here in Panama, we didn't grow up with such a strong concept of like cowboys and bull riders. That's just like a very much not here thing. But Elsie Silver just had a freaking way because her love interests were freaking phenomenal. I loved every single one of them. It was just a joy to read about every single one of these characters. I absolutely love this series and I am glad that I <laughs> picked up the Chestnut Spring series and that I have made progress with it. And we have one more book left, which is sad. But she does have like this other series. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'm sorry, I'm taking my meds out of... Uh <laughs> out of the package because I got these yesterday and I have not unboxed it and I always carry a little like medical kit with me on my bag because I never know when I'm gonna need anything if any of the people I'm out with are gonna need anything or if just by chances of the world there's somebody having like an anaphylactic display I'm like I've got meds so I'm just like restocking a few things is that weird maybe that's weird I don't know I don't think it is but I always carry everything with me in my purse I know she has this other series I can't remember what it's called and I also don't know if it's also like about ranchers or like cowboys bull riders I've got no idea what this other series of hers is about but I look you want to check it out I don't know if it's as good as Chestnut Springs but I would like to try out and see what's up have you guys read that specific series of hers couldn't even tell you the name if you asked me it I just know she's got one is called False Start I think I don't know they've got like the ugly covers you know with the people on them I definitely shame those covers I'm sorry if you love covers with people on them I will definitely judge you and the cover it's totally fine you know, sometimes in life, those are just the things that need to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got for you. That's all I've got to say as of yet. So we're going to go out, have brekkie, go browse some home stuff, and then come back and fold the laundry that we washed yesterday because um, newsflash, I didn't, I didn't fold it. It's right there. I <laughs> looked through the footage, did all the things, you know, the whole nine yards. Tell me why I have 360 gigabytes worth of clips, which amounts to over 240 clips. Um, yeah, listen, I thought weekly vlogging was a great idea. I'm loving it. I really am. But there's just a lot to sift through and <laughs> I'm not made for this life. Listen, that's the one thing I dislike about vlogging. I I love vlogging, don't get me wrong, but if there's one thing I wish would not occur with vlogging is so much editing. <laughs> I wish it would be simpler than having to sit on the desk chair for hours on end and then do what I have to do. What shoes am I gonna wear today? I don't know. See, my mom, <laughs> my mom got me these Crocs for Christmas, so I'm like, should I just wear the ginormous Croc Crocs because I have not worn these yet and I think these could be a vibe. They're kind of ugly, but I love them. It's like the Bratz shoes, you know, like the Lizzie McGuire shoes from like back in the day if there's something that my cats have it's the horrible habit of as you can tell just hiding in between my clothing and wanting to stay here but then they bite the clothes and so we're not trying to do all that also ignore again there's clothes thrown everywhere so we need to take care of the closet today that's the reality so that said i'm going to leave you here in the office i hope you behave okay portense bien and i will see you when i come back home <laughs>
some salutations. I came back home. I have a tea with me. It is nighttime. I have not updated the vlog since I last spoke to you this morning because my brother and I went to dim sum. Then we went to the home goods store and I came back home with not one, but two really heavy bags. And so I have got the goods. I got, oh my God, what I needed to get. There's quite a bit in there. And, and I came back. We had lunch. I was editing on my little laptop, doing the things. I then had therapy, just came out of therapy like 30 minutes ago. And now I'm making myself a warm, cozy drink to reset for the night. And then we go right back to editing because I still have loads to edit. I literally only managed to edit day one today because I had over six, 60 something clips. I think I had 70 something. I don't even know at this point. There was just way too much footage for that first day alone. And the talking clips were quite lengthy. And I have been editing like a slog. And so I edited very slowly today. So we're going right back to see if I'm able to finish up to day three before I, you know, log off and do everything else for the night. And then tomorrow we'll keep editing. But it is very likely that I'll have to push back this video to Sunday so that I have enough time to edit it all, get it together, and and then upload without having to rush through the process. And so that's completely fine. No qualms with it. That is a okay with me. Vin is also currently eating. You can see her. Hi, babas. And let me show you what I got because I absolutely love going to shop for things for the home. The one thing I didn't find, throw pillows. I saw every single thing they had. None of them were quite pretty, if I say so myself. A lot of them were ugly. They also had a lot of like beach themed beach house items for some reason, which I think makes sense just because we are currently in summer here in Panama. And so I'm going to have to go next week to another store and see if they have got better decorative pillows. So the first thing I got was a grater mandolin. I don't even know what you'd call this. It's a kitchen grater, I suppose. I quite liked this because it's, it's closed, so you have got a tray at the bottom that you can really pick and choose how you use, which I liked a lot. And you have got things to sift, you have got things to grate, you have the actual mandolin blade to dice things. And so I found this quite useful and I quite liked the color as well. I thought this one right here was quite stunning. Also needed to get a wok because anytime I cook any meat with veggies, none of my pans are high enough in order for things to not spill everywhere. And I had not found like a proper Proper walk. I have found other skillets that are a little bit higher, but not big enough so that it doesn't overflow. And I found this today. Quite like the color. Just, you know, just some kitchen finds with your girl. <laughs> I hope you're quite excited about this prime content you're getting today. Got some towels for the kitchen because the towels I'm currently using are the Christmas ones and Christmas is over, baby. <laughs> and I've already taken down the entire Christmas, as you can see, at my home. And the one thing I've yet to switch up is the kitchen towels because the the other ones I had before are just too old and I'm not planning on using those again. So I found these, I thought these were pretty and so got these as well. Got this for the kitchen, you know, the soap and then it's got the compartment here for the scrub tatty. So that's gonna be quite nice. And it's like this, it has this stoneware look to it that I absolutely loved. I got two mugs that I didn't need, but I thrive myself in being a mug collector. I love getting new mugs. I, as you can see, I'm constantly drinking tea now. And I also drink coffee and my guests, whenever I have any, are also huge tea drinkers. So I'm always in need of mugs because everybody's always drinking something out of them. I don't have a mug like this at all. And I thought it was quite aesthetic. It was a dollar, why wouldn't I? <laughs> and then this one, which is gonna be such a random tidbit, but it reminded me so much of my godfather. <laughs> like, I need this. He always has all of his stuff in like a, a deep royal blue, sea blue shade. And so I just got these and I love them because I have no mugs that look like this. I've got nothing but a candle on my centerpiece for the living room because before I took Christmas down, what I had there was a Santa and then like a small artificial arrangement of like, you know, 
Christmassy flowers and stuff. And I had no idea what to put there, <laughs> to be quite honest, but I figured a vase could be quite nice. Don't we love? I love this so much. Can I have space? Hi, I got a vase. That said, I wanted a little bit more height, so I got an orchid. <laughs> It's fake, obviously, because Lord forbid I take care of a, of a live plant and I love that it has the little stick. Listen, it's dynamic or whatever. So I figured these two plus the candle would look nice. Containers right here. So I had a hard time figuring out which ones to get because I'm like, what sizes do I need? Like, how do you gauge that? Listen, we didn't. So we just got four. <laughs> the same style, different sizes. So this one is 21 ounces and then this one's 32. And then these two right here, which I don't have any like horizontal containers. And so horizontal, vertical, what would you call these? Vertical, horizontal, you know what I mean? Flat containers. I don't half these and so this was a really nice addition to the collection i think especially for like leftover like lasagna or maybe cottage by i think this is a much easier situation to store it in let us go over here i love that this light is not on but it we have to fix it because the light is blinking so you're just going to enjoy yourself right here hello what do we think i think because the candle is so tall that it almost matches the vase <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna stop saying it like that. I don't know if it's the perfect height ratio from one to the next, but maybe if I got a smaller candle or maybe if we added more height or like something smaller, maybe it'd look better. If there's any person in here who knows about interior design, help. <laughs> Guys, when I tell you that today is such a hot day, it is unbearable. It is quite literally, please hold as I fetch my phone. It is 6.54 p.m. You can't even see that. 6.54 and it shouldn't be as hot as it is. I've had to crank up the AC in my office and in the living room because it's just one of those hot nights for like no reason at all. It's literally 30 Celsius at night. I don't think I've seen that in a while. And I do know that one of our hills today caught on fire it is looking crazy just in terms of the temperatures so we are attempting to make the apartment just a little less heaty and i'm about to make myself some tea because today is friday hi i didn't preface it by saying that but we haven't spoken today <laughs> i literally went to the gym this morning and all i have done today is edit <laughs> i literally came back from the gym at like 10 30 and I immediately had breakfast, sat down at the office, and I have been editing last week's weekly vlog. I have got 14 clips left, but it was such a feat to get done. I didn't think it would take me this long to edit the video, but it has. So we're nearly done, but it took every ounce of energy I had today. And to top it all off, we have got sprints tonight because we have got a public 24-hour readathon, but we go on Patreon for an extra 24. So for me, technically, it's a 48 hour readathon. So that's how we're doing. That's what the night is looking like. I'm going to be sprinting for the next four or so hours. And so I definitely need a warm drink in me just to make sure that we have got something cozy going on. And I'm going to be picking up Green Glass House, which is part of my January TBR. And so we're sticking to the TBR because I've already read two books out 
outside of it. So it's like a little treat. Two books for me, one book for the TBR. And so that is the plan next. That's what I'm going to be starting tonight. And I literally have all of probably two minutes at this point, three minutes to get myself situated and to get all the things done. So let us heat up some water. Let us steep some tea. And I also need to make my banner for the book I am reading and to activate Nightbot for the sprints because Nightbot, listen, it's tedious. Sometimes it doesn't turn itself on and sometimes it just needs a little wakey wakey. <laughs> and so that is the only update I have got for the day. Loads of editing and now loads of sprinting with you guys. And so that's all I've got. I'm also washing some clothes that I missed out on washing two days ago. And so just getting those done, including the workout clothes from today. And so there's that. Those are the updates. Nothing of substance, but here we go. had a more interesting background to put in videos but alas all you get is my living room my kitchen the office a lot and then occasionally my bedroom hello we have got a tea we are currently sprinting for the last round of sprints for the public readathon we will do like an extra 24 on patreon but for now this is the last of the public ones and i've been having a lot of fun honestly anytime i do these i get reminded of how much i love to sprint publicly I talked about it before as to why i stopped doing it in the first place it was just a lot of pressure and it was very overwhelming chaotic and often became a, a place of lack of safety like i there was a point in time where there were being like you know slurs being dropped in the chat where people were, you know, divulging like their personal information and it got really crazy because sometimes there's no way to kind of stop people from doing these things. And so I, just for that reason, and then on top of that, I was getting like, you know, spammed with messages and it was it, it was very overwhelming in, in videos and DMs and just everywhere with people being like, when are you sprinting? You need to sprint, you need to do this. And it, it made me just like so overwhelmed with the prospect of sprinting, made my anxiety really, really bad to the point where I had to like take a step back. But anytime I do these again i'm reminded of why i love it so much and also why you guys love it so much i still do it on patreon obviously twice a week but well sprinting is just one of my favorite things to do like i i hold it so near and dear to my heart and i know you guys love it too so hopefully you know in due time we can get to a, a spot where i can do these even just once a month to kind of hang out with you guys and get some reading done but it's been really really fun this weekend and i have an update for you i started green glass house yesterday and i am a hundred and 44 pages into this and I don't know how I'm feeling to be honest so in this one we follow Milo and his parents who own a smuggler's inn and every winter it's empty so Milo gets to have his own vacation and to hang out with his parents without the stress and worry of having to take care of you know customers and um, people staying over at the inn and he is very much looking forward to it he just wants to wind down around the Christmas time and have a nice cozy chill time except that somebody rings the bell and the first guest of the winter season gets there which is very unexpected not the norm very strange and after that first guest shows up then another guest shows up and another one does and another one does and there's suddenly too many people in this house they all kind of had the, the same exact reasoning to get there which is they wanted to be isolated alone none of them know how long they're gonna stay there for and it begs the question of how they got there how how did they find out that this inn was a thing? Why are they all being so mysterious about their stay at Green Glass House? And there are just so many different questions up in the air as to why they were there to begin with. And Milo enlists the help of the cook's daughter to figure out why exactly this whole thing is happening. And so far, 144 pages in, nothing has happened. And it's the tricky thing of, I am not the target audience for this book. Obviously it is the middle grade, it's geared towards middle schoolers. And 
so it's always hard to kind of gauge whether I should stay with a book like this or not. I'm very clearly a decade and a half past the reading target for this book. And so I don't know what to do at the moment. I think I'm gonna give it about 60 to 80 more pages so that I'm halfway through the book, a little bit over that, and figure out whether or not I'm going to carry on or DNF this book. I'm trying to tell myself to DNF books more this year, especially if I hit that 50% mark and I'm not loving the book. There's no reason why I should be sticking with it, you know? So I am trying to be more forgiving, giving myself more grace for it. There's nothing wrong with DNFing books. It's funny because anytime people are like, should I DNF? Should I not DNF? I always tell people that DNFing is self-care. It's so hard for me to follow that though and I feel like I need to stick to the book and finish it, especially to kind of give you guys some round out thoughts of the book and the story and what I thought and not kind of, you know, just give it halfway. But if I'm not enjoying this by 50% and nothing has happened, it's got to be DNF. So we'll see what happens. Again, 144 pages into this. I'm about to keep reading and sprinting and drinking my tea and I will talk to you guys once I've got an update on whether or not it's being DNF. These new mugs I got, girl, I, I nailed it. it. Honestly, stunning. I think we have got our first DNF of 2024. I am going to simmer this idea. I'm going to let it rest for tonight, but I do think I'm gonna end up DNFing Green Glass House. There's something about it that isn't quite clicking at the moment. I feel like I need something that I'm either somewhat familiar with, also known as Lord of the Rings, because I've watched the movies before. I know what I'm getting myself into. The expectation is set and will be met, or just something new that could be potentially more fast-paced than Green Glass House, because I think this book could be a vibe. If I was in the mood for something like slow, and unfamiliar. I don't know that I'm in the mood for it. I don't know that this is the book that's currently hitting the spot, nor that will hit the spot. I sampled the audiobook. I'm also not in love with the narrator, so I don't think the audiobook is gonna be the way to go for me, but I feel bad about DNFing it because I am kind of curious to see how it ends up, but then I think about the fact that this book has got, I believe, four or five books within the series, and I know for sure I would not read the rest of the series, so do I actually finish the book? Do I push through it? Do I force myself to keep on reading when I don't have any real desire to reach for it? Like, I could if I wanted to. I don't know that it's worth it. And so I think I'm putting this down. I'm leaving the bookmark in till I make a proper decision next week. But for now, I am DNFing the book. I got 51% through, someone paid 200, but for now the book is being put down. And I'm so sad that that's the note that this vlog ends up with a DNF, with the first DNF of 2024. But simply DNFing is self-care. And even if I feel bad about it, I do think that it's going to be the right decision to make. So there's that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. I'm cutting it short today's Saturday, but I am rearranging my shelves tomorrow and I'm filming a whole video on it. I'm still unsure of whether I am rearranging the entire thing or just fitting in the books that don't currently have a place in here. So I have to also make a decision on that overnight because I'm filming that tomorrow, but that's going to take the bulk of my day and I'm going to be doing that as I sprint on Patreon. And so there will truly be no no updates <laughs> tomorrow for this vlog. So I think it's it's best that we just cut this one short, finish it out while we're still doing good and jump into the next weekly vlog in two days on Monday because tomorrow will be rather uneventful. And I think getting a day's worth of a break from weekly vlogging will be really good to kind of recharge and then come back on Monday feeling really, really good to vlog for the last week of January because I am very much looking forward 
forward to the books I'm going to be reading this upcoming week. And so I think it'll make for a really, really cool reading vlog. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Comment down below what you've been up to, what you've been reading, how we're feeling. I hope we're all feeling well. We're nearing the end of the month, which is crazy. But let her all know how your January has been so far. And hope that you guys have been in the same reading vibe mood that I have been in because it's been really good so far. So let her all know how you've been doing with the reading. If you've read any cool things this week, do let her all know all of that down in the comments. And if you reach the end of the video, let us leave. What books did we read this week? Reckless. Let's leave like a cowboy related emoji. It could be a horse. It, is there a cowboy hat emoji? I don't know. Maybe a boot emoji. Whatever you can find that relates to cowboys, do leave that emoji down in the comments if you reach the very end of the video. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like these if you're new to the channel. And if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon. It's always linked down below. We're doing a month long readathon in February and I am sure you guys won't want to miss it. This week I am releasing the announcement with the prompts and the map and everything. Yeah, I love you guys so much. I will see you in my next one and I hope that you have a great week this week or that you've been having a great week. Love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!